Alcoholing Basics with Stencils and Rubber Cement, Part 2. Let's see how this one will work. Later. Okay, Doors from DF Designs gave me this idea. We were chatting about uh, the rubber cement I used in another Alcoholing Basics. And she had a thought about what about using it inside the stencil. And it spurred on two videos. This is the second one, but this is closer to her thought process. So I got these really cool stencils um, off Amazon, GSS Designs, and aren't those cool? Uh, they're, they're rather large, but I just love all the extra designs in the middle. It kind of reminds me of quilting and stuff. I, I did a lot of quilting and these were patterns I would do in the background and just kind of have fun with it and but also put them into shapes that were familiar like the butterfly and stuff so we're gonna have some fun with this um and rubber smack so hang on let me get set up and we gotta throw some color down to get started okay i'm gonna get this going with some color here so the other, I've got two videos out on this technique. This is, one of them is applying it to the outside. This is applying it to the middle area. And we're gonna see how this works. But for right now, we need to put some color down to get us started. I got a little bit of pink on my fingers, which is great from the previous video. So this one we're gonna do some blues. And I'll have at the end of the video, I'll have a picture of the colors I use. So if there's anything that gets your attention and ooh, gotta have that color, you'll have the, the still there that you can look at and uh, decide which ones you want. So I've done, I mentioned in, in the beginning, I've done some uh, quilting before and had a lot of fun with the design. I guess I should do this first and then talk second. Anyway. This is not moving the color around like I wanted it to. I do like that indigo in the middle though. I have to admit. Well, that works. All right. Almost reminds me of 3D art where you're getting a couple extra lines in there. It's kind of interesting. Okay, so our blue area dried. 
hopefully well enough. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna position this stencil right about here. I'm gonna keep a hand on here just for stability to keep it still. You could probably tape it down, but I kind of am impatient and I just like to go for it. That's just kind of me. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do in this case is I'm going to paint inside, let me get something to point with, inside this area in here with the rubber cement. So it's gonna cover and protect the blue and then I'm going to leave this in place, step away and leave it in place to allow it to, nope, let me take that back. I'm going to paint this on as quickly as possible. While it's wet, remove the stencil and let the rubber cement dry on the Yupo. Yes. Sometimes words come out well. Sometimes they, they need a little guidance. So, all right. Here we go. kind of busy concentrating that's why I'm not talking too much so sorry about that this should turn out pretty nice so the colors on this one I'm gonna do uh, pinks and some oranges in the background and I might even play with at applying a little bit of alcohol to maybe keep some of the blue but maybe reduce some of the blue so in other words, I'll be playing with removal of the inks as well. So that way we'll get a good judge of all of that. Okay, real quick, do, 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 do. oh, I need to do this, yikes. I'm trying to hustle so that I can remove this while it's still wet because sometimes rubber cement is one of those things that when it dries and you go to peel it apart, it wants to peel apart off the whole thing. And we don't want that to happen, we want it to stay in that butterfly design zone. Did I get everything? I think I did. Yep, yeah. okay. All right, time to peel. Okay, I'm gonna put this on top of the plastic from the stencil envelope so I can clean that later. And I'm gonna bring you in for a close up. I know it's looking like there's not much to see, but when you throw it at an angle, you can kind of see the butterfly there. This has some definite possibilities. Doris, you're brilliant. All right, I will come back and let's add some color at that point. Later. Okay, I just kind of noticed something. I tried to think ahead about things that could be a potential problem. So you can see the shiny of the antenna there. Can you see? Let's see if I can get something to point with. I'm always looking for something to point with. Yeah, up in here it's a little easier to see. Okay. You see how there's a little bit of a line next to it? I'm almost wondering if some of the rubber scent rubber cement ran underneath it just a little bit. And I'm looking at it, I can kind of see around the wings too. So I don't know if it's that or if it's some of the fumes maybe pushed something out. I don't know. We're gonna have to see. So hopefully this worked, because I'm kind of excited if it does work, because that opens up a lot of possibilities. All right. See you in tomorrow. The butterfly rubber cement is dried nicely. It's tacky to feel, which is what rubber cement does. And we are going to add some color. So let's put this up here. I'm gonna do the same thing I did before where I used a foam brush to apply the color because that gets a lot of color on in a hurry. And 
works out rather well. So I'm going to use some reds and some golds for the background. So that way we have a definite what was there before and, you know, what we've added. So I should probably put some gloves on. Hang on just a mo. Oh, well, it would help to put the thumb in the thumb spot. I'll start getting gloves on faster. I don't know how doctors like zip them on so fast, but I guess if you do it like a thousand times, you, you probably get pretty good at it. All right. Scooch in. Whoa. Okay, apparently my clutch gene has engaged. And there goes my dryer. Put that on the cart. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is on my foam brush, I'm gonna apply some drips of some different colors in here. And the first time I'm gonna do, I've got a gold and a caramel color. And I'm gonna do that for a while, mess with that up here, and then I'm gonna introduce uh, uh, a darker pink wild plum to it. So eventually the colors will get blended in there nicely. So that's kind of the general plan. And of course the more I use it, the more the colors blend on the brush as well. But we don't want to get to the point where it gets muddy. Granted I'm using kind of a Caramel color, so that could get muddy. All right. Okay, I guess we ought to just go for it. So I might just change it up every so often. Actually, you know what? I've got a paper plate here that I've got a bunch of different colors on there. I'm gonna make a pile of some of the wild plum and my yellow, hopefully that doesn't mix. And I'm gonna make a pile of caramel. And that way I can dip into it occasionally and add some colors. So I'm gonna bring in some plum right here. And basically we're gonna apply color all over. Let it dry really, really good. And then we'll remove the uh, the uh, rubber cement. Now apparently I'm getting some green too. Whoops! So I did waken up some of the other colors. All right. What is interesting is the area where the rubber cement is has darkened and you can start seeing the butterfly. So, I'm gonna add some more yellow to this. If I should start moving it around like this, I don't know. Never used these brushes for dabbing before. That kind of reminds me of something else. I'm gonna add a little alcohol to this. I 
I'll brush it around a little bit here. And I'm gonna dry it real quick. like a hot mess. Sure. Alright, I'm going to play like I normally will play and let's see how this behaves too under that kind of pressure. I don't mind the texture of the paper towel if it's something I'm trying to do, and especially intentionally, and in this case I am. So I'm just playing how I normally play. Kind of removing, kind of adding. brighter yellow in here. I don't know why. I just just need to kind of like how it's going going yellowish over there and I just want to do a little bit more. We want to let this dry thoroughly but we're, before we start removing the rubber cement, knowing that this is probably going to transfer to fingers a little bit. But if we let the ink dry off well enough, it shouldn't transfer too much to the paper. So that's what we don't want. We want to be, we want to be able to uh, manipulate it, but manipulate with a little bit of control there. So in this case, we want to remove the rubber cement without transferring it to the artwork that we just created. So, all right, so I'm going to stop for now, let it dry, and then we'll remove the rubber cement. See you tomorrow.
Okay, everything is nice and dry. Time to remove the rubber cement. Let's see, where do I start? Will work. All right, so something definitely did happen and I think it's very obvious here because the circles are very clean lines in the design. Let me bring that thing over so that you can see it. Okay, so see how those little semicircles are very clean? And these circles here are also very clean. So something does seep underneath of the stencil uh, when we go to uh, apply the stencil directly, meaning the, uh, the rubber cement through the stencil to allow it to dry here. So something does happen. However, um, if we take that part out of the equation, and remember, I'm just trying to figure out a way for us to utilize the stencils. So if you know ahead of time you're gonna go do this, and this is the kind of look you're gonna get, you can design your piece accordingly to get this kind of a look. So it still gives kind of like, even this is like feathering almost. It kind of gives it a distressed look also. So that's really, really interesting. Remember around the antenna, I was seeing a lot of that. And now you're seeing a lot of it where it's kind of feathered out. But you can very clearly see the antenna, you notice the wings, you notice that there's a lot of design in the wings. So this has definitely got some possibilities to it. Alright, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, more importantly hit the bell, get notified next time I put something up. Because you never know what we're going to come across and have some fun with. Alright, see you later.